Then we have the Tobrian Islands. Now this is off the southeast coast of New Guinea. And we can see it marked um, right here. So we do have some involvement of the groups of Papua New Guinea. Uh, we have other island groups nearby. And what we're looking at is tied to this idea of Kula, K-U-L-A, exchanges. These are exchanges of white for red shells. And you're saying they're going, they're shells, they live on the ocean, they have lots of them. Why in the world are they doing this? Well, you have what's called the Kula Ring. This is a trade network working throughout these islands. And this is important because it actually builds community. It forces them to interact with one another to share cultural resources as well as actual resources. And we see a great deal of competition for the best shell ornaments. This would bring pride to the community, to your individual community. And it increases trade in general. It means that these island groups that could easily be incredibly isolated, living off of maybe a single crop, barely able to survive, can suddenly start trading with each other. And think about this. This is not just physical trade. It could also be genetic trade. As part of these networks, you would see, for example, a warrior of marrying age who can travel to the different islands and find a wife on a different island, which means he doesn't have to worry about various taboos, since in an island group, everyone becomes interrelated very, very quickly. Now, this trade also frequently requires dangerous sea travel, which means that those shells are suddenly that much more valuable. It also gives them the opportunity to show off their skill at sea, in navigation, and in a trade-based society, that ability to navigate and survive at sea is particularly valuable. What we're looking at is a canoe prow and splashboard. Now this would be at the front of the boat. And this would hold spells that were invoked to protect the ship, usually contained within the prow of the ship. So we have some mystical uh, undertones to this. Again, that idea of superstition tied to the sea that we've seen in so many other societies. We see human, bird, and serpent motifs related to sea serpent, sorry, sea spirits, ancestors, and what are called totemic, T-O-T-E-M-I-C, animals. In other words, totemic animals are animals that would represent a specific clan, family, uh, maybe even a specific person. And there are usually things that you have to do to inherit that creature, to allow yourself to display that creature. So again, this is sort of tied to the sea, tied to who you are, who your ancestors are. All different groups. I mean, your ancestors are as protective as any spirit or god at sea. So you're going to bring in all of those different elements to protect you in this very unpredictable situation. We see that it's highly stylized, very intricate and curvilinear. So when we look at it, you'll notice, for example, our monkey at the top uh, is a very stylized monkey. He's not a very, very realistic monkey. When I say it's curvilinear, Again, we're referring to the idea of the use of curved lines throughout. So here we see sort of a spiral or circle form on each side. And then we have these curvilinear details within each curvilinear form. And this tends to be a very organic form. It feels good to look at. And that's sort of general human aesthetics. Now, the identification of specific elements is difficult because we are outsiders. We do not understand the code or entirely understand the code of this piece. For example, certain elements could refer to, for example, uh, say this edge piece could represent a wave or the spirit of the water 
or this could represent the wind. Or maybe it's the opposite. Or maybe it has nothing to do with it and they think that that's just a good aesthetic form, a beautiful form. We can't know for sure. So these pieces would look something like this. Now this is a painted version. This is a much more modern version, obviously. But you get the same sense. We have these very brightly colored forms. It's very stylistic, very curvilinear. Now today, Kula, that trade network, still exists and it still happens. But the boats, uh, these outrigger canoes, are now motorized. But you see they still decorate them. So this one would be from a group with white shells uh, coming in. And you could tell if you're sitting on the beach looking out exactly what this group is coming with and the purpose of their visit. 